Members, this is House Bill 6 by Representative Mandy Landry. It provides for the nature of elections of judicial offices. Um, it exempts candidates for judicial office from additional fees imposed by political party committees at qualifying um, and provides for the designation of political party affiliation for candidates of judicial office on ballots. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Representative Landry, on your bill. Thank you. This bill is sort of in the middle of what we have now and what Rep. Wright talked about with changing the way we elect judges. This would um, prohibit judicial candidates from putting a party on their ballot. And I used to agree with not electing judges, even though about 35 states um, do elect judges, but after seeing what lifetime appointments can do and with federal judges, I changed my mind. Um, but this does not do that. But as, as um, Rep. Wright said, judges are supposed to t serve. They're not supposed to talk about political issues when they're running. They can ask for money, which I find ridiculous because they just, as we know, hand the phone over. Um, there's also in the code of conduct for U.S. judges and for our state judges that says they should be faithful to the law and should not be swayed by partisan interests and that they should be above politics. And as a lawyer, and most of you who are lawyers um, strongly agree with that. Now we know who's going to be a little plaintiff friendly, who's going to be a little state friendly, but I do think that it gives voters... Um, if they are interested in, in the election, a little more opportunity to really look at the the history of a judge, their views as a lawyer, I shouldn't say views, their experience as a lawyer, um, to the extent they can talk about neutrally about issues. Um, and it's something that when talking among lawyers, you won't find a lot of disagreement. But... There are only nine states that, okay, there's about 35 states or so who elect judges. Only nine of us have partisan elections, and 15 have nonpartisan, including Arkansas, Georgia, Kentucky, and Mississippi, which are similar to us um, in terms of, of makeup of, of our state, although some of the, actually all of them except Georgia, um, are also red states. Um, we can keep the jungle primary in a sense for judges. You can do your top two. If we do it during a closed presidential primary, you can still do your, your top two vote getters unless one is 50%. I think um, Rep. Newell talked about removing, and Judge Carter, about removing um, judges from the party primary. We can keep them essentially as is. And... Um, that's all I got. Mostly this is a lawyer thing. People talk about it, and it seems to be getting wider support, and I do not want to do away with judicial elections at this moment. <laughs> I think we only have one former judge in the legislature. Representative Wright, if I have a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Landry, I appreciate you doing this. Um, I, I don't want to mislead I, I probably won't vote for it this time but I um I'm very sympathetic to some of the things you said we can do in regular <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm willing to talk about this I uh you mentioned it's a lawyer thing right you said that no, the most vocal yeah yeah so I think that's ultimately a big part of what I've always had a problem with and I'm not an attorney um there's a lot of people out there don't practice law maybe you've heard of a judge candidate from your community and you know a little about them you know you can read a little bit about them but they can't talk about issues can't talk about cases you know it's just there's so much about it that's an issue and let, let's face it i'm assuming in other localities it's similar to what i've seen is like you know the local bar quote unquote lines people up to run for judge and it's not a bad filtering process like you know i mean like they sort of weed out some of the people who shouldn't be there um, and, you know, so, as far as I've seen it in our district, it's, you know, people wait in line and, you know, they might wait a few years and then run. I mean, we have a, a former colleague who kind of did that just recently. Um, I, th I think the question is, is so little information. Um, and I think in this bill right now, that's why, like, that gives a, a, a voter a little bit of information, although it, it, it it falls under the category of like, you know, people just put a, a letter behind their name mm -hmm. when they run, you know, to do it. Um, 
But one thing I, I don't want to make you comment on this. I don't understand if you don't because you're an attorney. But um, this, my eyes were open to this um, about 14 years ago. I was uh, running a uh, arbitration group's uh, office in New Orleans for years, and you spend a lot of time <laughs> with attorneys, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of fascinating for me because I wasn't one. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of name partners who were, were arbitrators. And so you got, you know, access to a lot of uh, attorneys who have done well. And, and you know, they, they talked about how when people run for judge, you know, there's this sort of quote unquote shakedown, like basically all the candidates run around, they see all the mm -hmm. firms, you got to get the money. If you don't, you know, you're running a risk, this kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I think, I'm not sure that this is the answer, but I do think there's something worth us talking about. Um, I mean, I pointed out that Supreme court election, um, where somebody had to recuse themselves because of money. That I mean, that's there's a problem there. I, I like the idea of appointment, not lifetime. Honestly, I'd love to kind of look through what's some possibilities out there. But so I appreciate you bringing this, and I, I, I'm glad I found a comrade to maybe look through this issue. Thank you. I agree that I think there's a lot more we could do with um, revising campaign finance and other issues when it comes to judges. It is totally a shakedown. Um, I'm not I'm not a plaintiff's attorney, but I can see it. Um, they have to give to everyone. Um, the politics behind the scene, of course, where there's all these deals with most candidates for everything in New Orleans, and you know, you know who's not just plaintiff friendly, uh, bail bond friendly, all these things that are extremely irritating and um, I don't like it. And I would like to do something about it either. And I think the bar, when they look into candidates and I don't know if NOVA really recommends or just gives you information, is certainly a better way of knowing more information. I also get asked about judges all the time. People don't have no idea who these people are. But I think that puts an impetus on the judicial candidate to reach out a little more. And we could change the way they reach out. Um, there's a lot of different things we could do. Let's see what I want to look at real quick. Um, we could do differences in the amount of years they serve. Um, we could do a hybrid. Some states have where there's an appointment, but it goes through a process. Or um, I think we need to increase the amount of years, and I might do that in regular committee because eight years, I'm sorry, I barely knew. I was barely running my own cases sort of at eight years. Um, and are you talking about uh, Justice Hughes? The case that he had to recuse himself. There's only seven. I, I, did. I was involved in that case. I just want to see <laughs> oh, broadly. Yeah. I didn't um, mean to single anybody out. I just thought the, sub, the, the concept was not good. It was preposterous because if we did that, there would, I mean, it would be complete chaos. I would file it all the time. I mean, what's the limit? $5, $5,000. By the way, that you can give $5,000 is atrocious. Um, <laughs> that was, I mean, that was just terrible that that, that would be happening all the time. So um, that's my spiel. I think we can do a lot more in regular committee. Also, it's not just the shakedown on money. Those of us who are judiciary committee get a lot of pressure. We just do. And I don't even practice that much in, in civil court. But that's my spiel. If anyone wants some questions, um, wants to work on this as we move on. Thank you, Representative Wright. Uh, Representative Newell, uh, Representative um, Carver, did one of y'all have your button pressed? We had a little bit of a technical issue here. Did we, okay, I thought so. One second. Again? One there you go. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Rep. Landry. Um, Rep. Wright, I wish I knew where that line was at the New Orleans Bar Association so I could go jump in it because I didn't it might know you be line up to be a judge because I need to get in that line. <laughs> um, and for clarity, this is not saying that judges cannot choose a party. It's simply stating that they do not have to place their party affiliation on there when they go to qualify to run? They can't list it. They, of they course, cannot. as an individual, can be any party, and I'm sure that would come out during the election. Okay, just making sure. So when mm -hmm. they go to qualify, they, it would, like, no party. they all do, they do not have to put their party affiliation on there. Um, just wanted to make that clear. They and can't. No, they can't. Cannot. Mm -hmm. Cannot. Um, and going to some of... Uh, 
Rep Wright's comments is judges can't talk about a whole lot and folks typically don't know a lot about judges and they do have issues because people inherently were nosy. <laughs> and we want to ask questions and we want the answers when we ask, but once you sign into that, take that oath into the Bar Association, when it comes to your client, you can't speak about different things as an attorney. And as a judge, you're then held to even a higher standard um, of protecting the parties and the attorneys that come before you, and you cannot discuss anything that's in pending litigation. So judges are held to a higher standard. And when folks ask me, and even when I'm approaching the um, the polls to go and vote for a judge, I take the time and educate myself and see how they were as a former attorney. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that's when it all comes out. Well, like that person shouldn't even have a bar license, let alone wearing the robe. Yep. And you get that information when you ask. And um, but I, I just want to make it clear that sometimes we just have to do a little bit of education on ourselves. And I would not want to limit the judges to this this primary which we just discussed. Because sometimes a person that has the highest integrity may not be of the party that mm -hmm. you are in, but they have uh, have put themselves out and has set an example of being one that can judge fairly in accordance with the law and jurisprudence that has been set. Um and just and but that goes back to looking at how a person handles their cases and handles their clients on either side of the V and as a member of any party, but party should never come into play when you're in that courtroom. It should just be according to the standards of the laws that we enact here and again with the um with the jurisprudence that is set from higher courts or um, courts that have come mm -hmm. before. So I just wanted to make, just put that on there and get that clarification as to that DNR, because some folks listening at home might have gotten that confused just the way it was phrased that mm -hmm. about them not being a party. They just will not be able to put their party affiliation on Correct. the form when they go to re register. Correct, and it won't be on the ballot. Thank you for indulging me, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. A point of clarification, too. If we close our primaries party system, we would have some issues with uh, the non-affiliated judges, correct? Well... Everyone would be prohibited from putting their party. This would probably require an amendment, or the closed parties would require an amendment. And as I said, we can put them on the primary. Well, that would confuse the people who are no party, as we just discussed at length. Um, I think if we pass this, which I don't think is going to happen today, um, we can discuss that further. But I, I mean, I think it's something that can be worked out. Okay. And they you could be on another ballot. All right. There are no more questions. You want to close on your bill? I think that's good. And if uh, if someone wants to move, I'd be happy. If if you just want to table it, I'm fine with that too. Okay. 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 Representative Newell wants to uh, move to move House Bill six favorably. Um, Representative Carlson objects. Um, Miss Miss Baker. Chairman Bowie. Well, excuse me, Ms. Baker, real quick. We just have some, have some cards I need to read in, if you don't mind. Sorry about that. I, I, I jumped a little too quick. Uh, from the Secretary of State's office, uh, we have the Secretary Nancy Landry, uh, Ms. Sherry Hadsky, uh, and Ms. Catherine Newsom. Uh, and also opposed to the bill, none of them wishing to That's speak, um, would be... Chris Alexander, the Louisiana Citizens Ad Advocacy Group, uh, Miss Mary Labry, uh, Larry Harms, or Harris maybe, and Kathleen Harris. So 
Sorry about that. Uh, we have a, a motion from Representative Newell to move House Bill favorably. Uh, Representative Carlson has objected. Uh, so, Ms. Baker. Chairman Boyer? No. No. Representative Billings? No. No. Representative Boyd? Representative Carlson? No. No. Representative Carter? Yes. Yes. Representative Carver? No. No. Representative Farnham? No. No. Representative Gadbury? No. No. Representative Johnson? <coughs> no. Representative Larvidane? Yes. Yes. Vice Chair Lyons? Yes. Yes. Representative Marcel? Yes. Representative Newell? Yes. Yes. Representative Shammerhorn? No. No. Representative Thomas? No. No. Representative Wright? No. Representative Weibel? No. No. There's four yeas and 11 nays. The bill fails to carry. Um, so um, House Bill 6 will not be reported.